Hi viewers, I am Hassan and you are watching my YouTube channel. Today's topic is power losses in Gables. Very informative. Uh, I hope you will enjoy this topic. Um, in my previous videos, I have discussed about uh, the three main criteria for the selection of cables, which includes uh, uh, the current carrying capacity of the cables, uh, the voltage drop of the cables, and the short circuit uh, current capacity of the cables. But uh, nobody haven't discussed about the power losses in the cable or a conductors. So this is also one of the very important aspect that need to be addressed when you're selecting the cables. So I will discuss about this in my uh, today's presentation. Uh, keep watching my channel and subscribe my channel and like my videos. Let's move on for the presentation. So what are the power losses? Let's talk about it first. Uh, basically, whenever the current flows uh, through a conducting material or a path, every conducting material has got a conductor resistance. And that conductor resistance uh, heated up when the current flows through it and create uh, the power losses or a drop in a cable. Same as in the case of a voltage drop. So these are also known as the I square losses or a kilowatt losses. So let's talk about one of the very commonly used expression known as P is equal to I square R. That is I square R losses. So the power losses are directly proportional to the I square R. That means uh, if the value of the current or the value of the resistance increase, the power losses will definitely be increased. Further, if we derive the value of the resistance, we know another formula known as uh, R is equals to rho L divided by A, where R is the resistance of a conductor, rho is the resistivity of that conducting material, L is the length of the conducting material, that means the, the distance that the cable will travel, and A is basically the cross-sectional area of that conductor or cable. So when we substitute this value, the value of that resistance into the I square R formula, that is the power loss formula. So we'll get another value or another expression that is known as the power loss in kilowatt, which is equals to N into 1000 into I square into rho into L divided by A, where N is the number of cores in a cable, okay? I is the current flowing in a conductor, and I is basically the current flowing in the conductor and rho is basically the resistivity of the conducting material. For example, say copper, aluminium, silver, or whatsoever. Where L is the length of the conducting material, that uh, how much uh, uh, the distance that the cable will travel or the laying distance of that cable. And A is the cross-sectional area of that conductor or cable in millimeter squares. So, when we uh, see this expression, we can easily understand that uh, uh, the power loss is directly proportional to the value of the current, uh, the value of the resistivity of the conductor, and the value of the length of the conductor. That means if these three matter, three uh, parameters increases, the power losses will also be increased. And if three, if these three parameters reduces, then the power losses will also be reduced. And there's another parameter, which is the cross-sectional area of the conductor, the size of the cable, which is also known as size of the cable. And if the size of the cable is basically inversely proportional to the power losses, which means if the size of the cable increases, the loss of losses in that particular cable will reduce. And if the size of the cable increases, the power losses reduces. And if the size of the cable decreases, the power losses will be increases. So these uh, expressions are very important uh, to understand before selecting a cable um, while considering the power losses. So higher the size of the conductor, uh, we have concluded that higher the size of the conductor, the power losses will also be lower. The longer the length of the conductor, the power losses will be higher. And if the conducting material will, with the lower resistivity is used, then the power will losses will also be reduced. So let's move on. Here in this slide, I have uh, shown uh, some of the important conducting material that are used uh, in the cable manufacturing or in the manufacturing of the conductors, uh, which includes uh, firstly the copper, very most commonly used, then the aluminium and the silver. The silver is the least uh, commonly used uh, material in the market these days, with having a better resistivity, which is 1.59 to 10 to the power minus 8 ohm. 
but the availability of silver material is slightly difficult. So, commonly used materials are copper and aluminium. If you compare the copper and aluminium, copper has got the better resistivity as compared to the aluminium, but in price, uh, the copper is uh, much expensive as compared to the aluminium. So, sometimes people move to aluminium cables because uh, these are cheaper. But it is very important the optimization of your uh, conducting material uh, must be ensured when you are selecting the cable. Uh, which means that if you are having, uh, uh, if you are using a 120 mm square, for example, copper cable, uh, then you may require uh, the same cable with same losses and voltage drop. Uh, in aluminium, you need 240 or 300 mm square. So uh, uh, it would be same. The size of the cable may not be same when you are using the different conducting material. So just uh, use according to your conditions and according to your uh, losses or voltage of condition. So let's move on. Here we are going to calculate uh, the power loss in a conducting copper conductor. So we are taking an example first with you are having a total load of 100 kilowatt and as we are using a copper conductor so the resistivity of the copper conductor is 1.68 under the power minus 8 ohm meter. As we are using a multi-core cables, 4 core. Uh, with the, the cable sizing of 150 mm square copper PVC PVC. The length of the cable we are expecting here is 300 meters. The pull load current for uh, this size of a load 100 kilowatt is 174 amperes. Uh, the D rating factor we have only one at this moment which is ambient temperature 40 degrees centigrade and uh, the D rating factor is 0.87. So by dividing the pull load current that is 174 by the D rating factor 0.87 we are getting a D rating current that is 200 amperes. And the size of the conductor we are selecting here is 150 mm square. We go to the cable table and find out what is the value of the current for against this size of cable. So this is a copper conductor, in cable table. And for 150 mm square cables, uh, we have got 319 amperes for this size cable. Uh, for a reference method E, that is in free air or a perforated cable table. So if you go, uh, the D the 319 amperes is much more higher than the D rating current, which is 200 amperes. So that means uh, 150 mm square is quite sufficient uh, for this particular uh, load. Now we also calculate the another uh, condition, right area, that is voltage drop. If you calculate uh, the voltage drop uh, for 150 mm square, let's go to the cable table. At 150 mm square, getting a value of millivolt per ampere per meter at 0.29. So, with the help of uh, the voltage drop formula, that is Vd is equal to millivolt into length into amperes divided by 1000, we get a voltage drop in percentage 3.6%, which is quite acceptable according to the IC stand. Now, let's talk about the power loss. As we have derived in our uh, previous slide uh, about the power loss uh, formula, uh, now just substituting all these values into the power loss, we can calculate the power loss in kilowatt. So, N is the number of uh, cores, that are 4, and 1000 is just to, to ensure that uh, the unit would be similar. So, we are multiplying with 1000, multiply by uh, the current carrying capacity or the full load amperes, that is uh, 174, the square of the current into the resistivity of the conducting material, that is copper, 1.68 times to the power minus 8, into the length, which is basically uh, 300 meter for this particular example. And divide by the thousand, the cross section area of the conductor 150 mm square. So we're getting a value of 4.06 kilowatt, which is 4% of the power losses uh, when we're comparing with uh, the total full load that is 100 kilowatt. So let's move on. But anyway, just to make sure you that 4% is quite higher at this moment. Uh, so in order to ensure that uh, to reduce these losses, we have to uh, take certain steps to ensure that the losses can be reduced to a certain value that you are expecting. So in my case, I am expecting a 2% loss uh, minimum in order to ensure that 2% uh, loss would be maintained for this particular example. So let's move on. So in this case, if we want to reduce the power losses to 2%, uh, we can calculate the cable length that what cable length is required in order to reduce our losses from 4% to 2%. So we are taking the same example, the 100 kilowatt is a load, our residuity of the conductor is 1.68 times to the power minus 8, multi we are using a multi-core 4-core cable. The length of the cable we are going to calculate. So 
the formula is same we just rearrange this formula and this time so in order to calculate the length of the cable I will just rearrange the formula and uh, uh, for the value of the power loss uh, we, as we are required the 2% power losses so we can just multiply the 2% with the, the total full load that is 100 kilowatt and we'll get around the value of 2 uh, kilowatt okay so the remaining values will be just substituted from uh, the given data and that is uh, the area of the conductor is 150 and the multi core cable 4 core into 1000 into square of the current into uh, resistivity of the conductor so we are getting a value of uh, 147 meters so that is a difference uh, as compared to what we have uh, achieved in the last uh, example let's go back here we are using the 300 meters uh, cable I mean the length of the cable was 300 meter and we are getting a losses at 4% which is quite higher so we have make a case study now how can we reduce these losses to 2% and we'll find out what length of the cable is required to reduce these losses to 2%. So in this example, what we have done, we have calculated that length to ensure that the losses would be 2%. Okay. So by having a value of, uh, by having a length of uh, 140 centimeter, uh, we'll uh, get the power losses at 2%. So now we calculate the voltage drop at 147 meter by using the same formula vd is equal to millivolt into 10 to the power uh, into length into current divided by 1000 so we'll get the voltage drop at 1.68 percent 78 percent so this is very interesting that uh, by reducing the length uh, you have achieved uh, the reduced power losses as well now let's take another case study this time uh, we will calculate the cable size in the last uh, in the previous video uh, slide we have calculated uh, the cable length and this time we are going to calculate the cable size and ensure that uh, the power loss is reduced to 2% for the same copper conductor. So we just rearrange the same formula and uh, we will calculate the size of the cable instead of the length of the cable this time. And uh, by substituting all these values that the number of cores are 4 into 1000 into square of the current into resistivity of the conductor into 300 that is the length of the meter so as in our first example the, uh, the length of the cable was 300 meters so we are using the same here because we are uh, focusing on the cable size this time we are not uh, changing the length of the cable uh, this time we are going to change the size of the cable so by keeping the length of the cable remains same and the power losses as we are expecting and we are uh, achieving uh, the target power losses are 2%. So 2% of the total full load that is 100 kilowatt. That would be 2. So by substituting all these values, we are getting a value at 304 or 5 mm square. So the nearest cable available is 300 mm square. So we'll use that one. Now calculate the voltage drop. Let's uh, go to the cable table. At 300 mm square copper conductor. The voltage drop would be 0.185. Here you see 0.185 for 300 mm square cable. Let's go to our example. Here you see for 0.185, so the VD is equal to millivolt into length that is 300 meter into the current rating that is 174 amperes divided by 1000, and you will get the voltage drop uh, of 2.32%. At 300 mm per cable, so that is very interesting. By reducing uh, in this example, we basically change the cable size to ensure that uh, the our uh, reduced uh, power losses would be gone down to two percent for the copper conductor. So let's move on, and this time now we are going to calculate the power losses uh, for the aluminium conductor. In our previous uh, example. Uh, when we have calculated the copper conductor power losses for the same example i mean the same parameters the total loss uh, sorry the total power is 100 kilowatt but the resistivity of the conductor has been changed because the material of the conductor is aluminium now 2.65 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter the number of cores would be four core the length of the cable is same 300 meters ampere would be 174 ampere again the same the derating current again the same is 200 amperes we are using the same derating factor the size of the conductor would be changed now 
let me go back to the copper conductor example here it is here we were having the size of the conductor is 150 mm square for 300 meters and the same load and the resistivity of the copper conductor is 1.68 okay but when we are going for the aluminum conductor uh, the size of the cable has been changed now we are going to have 240 mm square in order to ensure that uh, it will meet the derating current as well as the voltage drop so at 240 mm square the ampere rating is 330 ampere let's go to the cable table here you see at 240 mm square the current carrying capacity is 330 amperes whereas the voltage drop or millivolt per ampere per meter value is 0 0.30 at 240 mm square and keep in mind that this is the aluminium conductor not the copper so that i was explaining you when i was uh, talking about the resistivity of the conductor for the same parameters uh, when we are using choosing the copper conductor uh, we are having a 150 mm square cable that will be used but when we change the uh, into aluminium conductor now we require 240 mm square for the same parameters i mean the same voltage drop around the same approximately the same voltage drop and the current carrying capacity will be maintained at 240 mm square wherein the copper conductor it was maintained at 150 mm square size cable so that is a different so for the power loss just uh, uh, substitute all these uh, values and you will get the power loss around 4.01 kilowatt which is 4 percent of uh, the total load that is 100 kilowatt which is slightly higher uh, if you want to maintain it to 2 percent again you have to use the same uh, method as i have uh, mentioned in my previous slides that uh, firstly you can uh, reduce uh, the losses to 2 percent by changing the cable length and second uh, you can reduce the top losses to 2 percent by changing the cable size so you can do it by yourself and uh, keep uh, sharing me in the comments that what results you have achieved and i hope it would be a good exercise for you so that's all and i hope that it would be very informative and a new addition to your uh, learning perspective and i hope you will uh, keep watching my videos in the future and like my videos subscribe my channel so that uh, i'll keep on uh, uploading uh, these videos in the future thanks for now bye for now